Hello, my beautiful people. Welcome back to Furry Be Wary. Fur Be Wary. The Furry Month here at Toon Talk. Now, I'm doing this again in a hot tub because screw it. Let's just make all of Fur Furby Wary in, the, in a hot tub because I think it fits with furries in general because well uh because uh, like uh like a stereotype of furries that oh they're all really freaking horny so me being shirtless in a hot tub just waiting for a lovely lady to join me fits perfectly plus february is also the month of valentine's day and also also this movie just so happens to be a musical romance as well as a furry film so today, we shall be talking about Don Bluth's The Pebble and the Penguin. Now, The Pebble and the Penguin is often referred to as uh, one of Don Bluth's lesser animated films. And yeah, it deserves that statement. This movie sucks. So the film is about this penguin voiced by Martin Short, who wants to give this pebble to his fair lady in order to like properly propose and be dating because apparently pebbles apparently penguins give the male penguin give the female penguin a pebble to prove that they love each other <laughs> penguins are weird bro but the evil villain voiced by Tim Curry is like nah I want that girl so he just gets rid of Martin Short Penguin, like, like, almost kills him. Martin Short Penguin ends up on a ship carrying tons of penguins for some reason. And this other penguin who's, like, the only name I could remember in the movie, named Waldo. It's not named Waldo. His, his name is, his name is, what is his name? You know what? It's Rocco. Yeah, Rocco's his name. Rocco's his name. Rocco is the wallaby and Zoe's pet rock. So Rocco is voiced by Jim Belushi. I don't like him. They meet each other. They end up leaving the ship, both of them. And they end up teaming up in order to get Martin Short Penguin home to his lady while trying to keep track of that pebble along the way. Um, so, yeah, this movie is really nothing special. It's the standard buddy travel movie, along with a standard animated musical romance. But nothing new is being done here. It's the same boring, generic animated family film that was all over the place in the 90s, where because of the success of the Disney Renaissance with The Little Mermaid, Beauty and the Beast, Aladdin, all that stuff, every single animation studio tried to copy that formula by being like fairy tale like or fantasy equivalent with talking animals most of the time and having it be a musical. Hey, even it being musicals with films that really shouldn't have been musicals to begin with like The Thief and the Cobbler and Tom and Jerry the movie the original Tom and Jerry movie where they were talking for some reason and there were more of these Disney knockoffs than the actual Disney films at the time that followed that formula because there were a ton of of these like Don Bluth had made a few made a few of them in the 90s with uh, this film but including Thumbelina and A Troll in Central Park but there were also films like the aforementioned Thief and the Cobbler and Tom and Jerry the movie but there was also Rover Dangerfield the, the, Once Upon a Forest The Swan Princess but somehow got like six sequels now some of the the have become cult classics and favorites to this day like the prince of egypt 
and Anastasia. But for the most part, it's crap like Quest to Camelot. People that people can, films that people can agree that aren't really good, but they exist because Disney made a lot of money and The Pebble and the Penguin is definitely one of those movies because there's nothing to the story itself. It doesn't add anything new. The only difference is that it's penguins. And funny enough, I believe this is one of the first animated penguin movies. Because later on in the 2000s, we would be getting tons of penguin movies with Happy Feet, Surf's Up, Penguins of Madagascar, even live action penguin movies with March of the Penguins. So, s someone in Hollywood really liked penguin movies. And I guess you could say that Pebble and the Penguin was really ahead of its time for being a movie starring penguins. And in nothing else. Although I will give the movie this one credit. The animation is pretty good. I've yet to see a Don Bluth production with terrible animation. Him and his team really do know how to make fantastic animation even in their worst movies like this one where the animation truly does shine especially within the musical numbers. The musical numbers are where the animation truly does pop and become alive which is the case with a lot of different animated films that aren't really that good but it does look really good. I think the best case of animation is actually in the opening number where they kind of do a lot of fun creative things with the visuals like they're literally dancing on the sheet music for the song which I don't think I've ever seen an animated film do that that wasn't like a weird experimental segment in Fantasia or that one scene with the Flight of the Bumblebee sequence in Melody Time I believe where the music is literally trying to kill the bumblebee that I think that's like the only other example I can think of where characters actually interact with the sheet music of the song. But audience, please correct me if I'm wrong on that scenario. But the animation is also pretty good throughout the rest of the film. Although one weird thing about this film is that with the copy I found off of Amazon Prime, that's how I watched this movie, it, the quality of the film itself changed, like, visually. Like, there was this point, like, towards the end of Act 1 where it suddenly shifted from, like, some standard DVD from, like, 2002 visual quality and then to HD Blu-ray quality for a streaming service. I, I, I don't know why it did that. Amazon is freaking nuts and so inconsistent with how they present their movies and shows. Like, this is a bit of a tangent here, but they constantly have either really good backlog content, pretty well known, pretty obscure content that no one's really heard of, but they're still pretty good, or absolute bottom of the barrel garbage that nobody cares about or likes. But they're still on here for free, available with Prime. And sometimes their well-known movies will be in really good quality. And other times, like with this film or with the original Little Shop of Horrors from the 60s, it looks terrible. I don't know, man. Amazon is so weird. But back to the Pebble and the Penguin. Yes, the animation is really good. Something that is not really good are the characters and voice acting, especially. The the voice acting. Let's focus on the characters first. The characters are the bland, generic archetypes that you will see in literally all of these movies. Alright? You got Martin Short Penguin, who's the lovable, good hearted, but clumsy but good hearted hero who just wants to find a lovely lady. The lovely lady is the standard female love interest 
damsel in distress. The Tim Curry Penguin is the standard villain, but he's easily the best character because he's voiced by Tim Curry. And, uh, I personally found the Jim Belushi Penguin to be very, very annoying. He, he's the standard, like, tough guy who doesn't want to become friends with our main characters, but becomes friends by the end of the movie for some unknown reason. I guess it's just a guy used to his bullcrap. But... And then you got the typical cute little sidekicks with these little birds that have been flying around. And... It, they're so generic. They're so bland. There's no... Barely any personality to them that you haven't seen in a million other fa family films. Although... One thing that I definitely haven't seen in a million other family films is a penguin flying. Yes, the Jim Belushi penguin freaking flies in this movie. There's this runner throughout the film that the Jim Belushi penguin can fly and that penguins can fly as long as they believe in themselves. You know, faith, trust, and pixie dust and all that crap. And I guess... Chekhov's gun, you know, we just see the freaking penguin fly with, like, no, with, like, no reason, like, what? There's a bit of pretty grounded, like, technically not grounded, but the, really the only thing that the penguin's talking about their own society. The, a penguin flying. Really. And towards the end of the movie, during the finale song, we see the main character's kids, and a few of them are also flying. Okay? Speaking of the finale... Did not like the song. Did not like the songs at all. Okay, scratch that. I only, I only really like two songs. One was the opening number. Again, because I really liked the vocals in there. And visually looked amazing. Lyrics were so-so. And I liked the villain song. Simply because it was sung by Tim Curry. And... Anything sung by Tim Curry is amazing and makes me feel things that I've never felt before. Uh, what makes you think Rocky Horror Picture Show was so popular or became so popular and why Toxic Love is the only song from Firm Gully that people remember? Another film that tried to copy the Disney formula in the 90s, which is kind of weird considering the fact that Firm Gully is now owned by Disney. So the other songs are just completely bland, boring, uninteresting, generic. Oh, except for this one other song. It's called... I don't even know what it's called. The song that's sung on the boat. It is the most annoying song, or at least one of the most annoying songs I've ever heard in an animated family film like I wanted to shoot my eardrums during this song I wanted to shove a freaking screwdriver in my ears twist it around and then grab a saw and just cut my head off because the song was just so freaking annoying like, Jesus man it, it, it was bad it was such a bad song and that's the thing about this movie. It's bad. It's boring. It's, there's occasionally a moment where it's so bad it's hilarious. But for the most part, it's just a really boring kids film. That, yes, will distract the kids for a few hours. But there's really nothing of value to it that will stick with those kids through adulthood. Or And there's definitely not much... And for if anything that the adults can enjoy outside of some admittedly pretty good animation and a couple nice songs so yeah if if you're a Don Bluth or an animation fan skip this one there's nothing of value to it it's it's very it's not very good it's pretty mid four out of ten but anyway, guys, that'll be it for this installment of February. We might make one more of these. We might not. I don't know. I've gotten behind because my little trip took 
more out of me than I thought it would. But anyway, guys, if you would like to see more videos, then please be sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and ring the bell to be notified when future videos are uploaded. And what do you guys think of the pebble and the penguin? Do you like it like some type of idiot, or do you not like it like, like a normal person? Please let me know down in the comments below. And until next time, I will see you later. Bye!